Hey there, Father Michael here. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 6, Paul writes, Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members don't have the same function, so in Christ we have different gifts according to the grace given to each one of us. So I was doing a stint as an interim pastor uh, a few years ago. Uh, it was a small congregation uh, that was in the process of discerning their identity, discerning, you know, even whether they should continue uh, in ministry, discerning their future. And so we did this for many months, um, and now it's the holiday season. And it's Christmas Eve, actually. And so here we are. We're, you know, I'm going to do the Christmas Eve service there. And the church was more full than usual, you know, of course. Typical. Um, there was a, kind of an ad hoc choir thing going on there. Um, I would have to say a rapidly aging choir. Um, and they decided that they were going to sing some prelude material, some pre-service music, which actually wasn't bad at all. It was pretty good. And then, of course, to make this Christmas Eve super special, because at that point, it may have been the last Christmas Eve uh, in their long history of ministry, uh, members of the congregation decided that they were going to put together a handbell choir to play a few carols during the pre-service uh, music time, the prelude, and also uh, to have the handbell choir accompany some of the carol singing during the service itself. Well, great. I am all about it. I happen to really enjoy handbell choirs, in point of fact. And so there I am, you know, I'm up in the front uh, on my presider's chair and I'm, I'm kind of settling in and I'm looking forward to this. Um, and I'm, I'm watching as this handbell choir, uh, you know, comes up and begins uh, to assemble uh, itself. Uh, and so I'm, I'm leaning back in my chair and I'm, I'm like open, open mind, open heart. I'm ready to be moved by the eloquent voices of these perfectly timed and perfectly tuned bells to welcome the birth of Jesus the Christ into our human history. And so there they are, the brass bells, they are, they are gleaming, they're shining, you know, with a golden brilliance and all of that. They're lined up smallest to largest uh, on, on white covered padded tables um, in the sanctuary and the choir members come up, you know, in a, in a nice line and they're all wearing choir robes and they've all got immaculately white cotton gloves um, and they took their positions and they're poised to, to engage in this performance. They're just ready to watch for their conductor who's going to direct them and then they will take their cue, lift their bells, and we'll have this whole beautiful experience. And sure enough, the beautiful bells did their thing. They rang out with a beautiful clarity, I would say, that just really filled the church space. But, it's always a but, but <laughs> for some of the choir members, they were a little slow on the uptake. Um, they were off, actually. Their timing was off like a quarter beat or so, making for a sloppy performance that really sounded more like maybe it was the first time they'd ever tried to do this thing uh, together as a choir. It didn't sound performance worthy, let's say. And besides the timing issue, there was one bell 
I want to say it was the F1 Dell. I'm not sure, but this is the curse of having near perfect pitch. It was an F Bell for sure. I think it was F1. The ringer had apparently deteriorated or was broken or only part of it was there. There was something going on and the result was that that F1 Bell made a weird, fuzzy, weird little note. Some distorted sound. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, an F bell for an F worthy performance. And I remember struggling to just keep my poker face on. And so I closed my eyes and I tried to look prayerful. And I am begging God, Lord, in your mercy, make this stop. Please, I am begging you. <laughs> and later on in the service, when they attempted to play Silent Night, as we all held our lit candles, North Americans love fire in church. I don't know why, but we just love it. We will, we will find any pretext to hold fire in our hand in church. And they're playing Silent Night, and I remember thinking, Oh, my sweet baby Jesus. If this cacophony, this handbell choir from hell, had been in Bethlehem on that first Christmas night, the poor baby Jesus, in the process of being birthed into this world would surely have crawled back up inside Mary's womb and covered his ears with his hands and waited for some other day to make his appearance. And it was finally over. And the service was finally over. And I graciously thanked everyone for their hard work in putting this whole thing together. And I was sincere with that. But I'm thinking, oh man. And then something crazy and inexplicable happened. After the service, as we're preparing to, you know, make our exit, the whole congregation was on its feet, clapping, cheering, giving the musicians a standing ovation. And so many people said to me and, and said to each other that it was the most beautiful, amazing Christmas Eve service that they'd ever been a part of, that the music had touched them so deeply this year. Looking back on that cacophonous handbell from hell, uh, experience back then, it seems to me now that that handbell choir is like a perfect image of the Christian community, the church, the body of Christ, as, as Paul calls it. Paul compares the whole thing, the whole church, to a human body, noting that every member is as important as any other member but that we don't all have the same function. We, we all have our role to play in making this body of Christ credible and powerful and effective. Each of us plays a role in strengthening the body of Christ, in, in creating that body of Christ, in sustaining it and helping it to evolve to its full potential and full stature. And like that wayward handbell choir, we too probably need to pay a little closer attention to the conductor so we can work together in unity and peace and integrity. It's Jesus, of course, who's the conductor. And apparently, Jesus does not have perfect pitch. 
because it doesn't matter. What matters is the intent and the effort we put into these things. It is always easy to find fault with other people. Super easy. It's also all too easy to find fault with ourselves, to feel small in stature, as I discussed in last Sunday's sermon. It's easy to see ourselves as not quite capable of making any difference in this world, of being so small, so insignificant, that there's nothing we can do to change much of anything. And yet, and yet, God thinks otherwise. God wants us to recognize and to accept that we are, in fact, of great importance in this world. When we use our gifts, when we choose to reach out and touch another person's life and support them as best we can, even if we're a little off-key, even if we're not perfectly on pitch and if our timing is just a quarter beat off, when we just decide, heck with it. I'm just going to do what I can. I'm going to use the talents I have as best I can. Even if it's not total perfection, then we are, in fact, making a joyful noise. We are making a melody that is pleasing to God. Let's pray. Mighty loving God, originator of the orchestra in which we find ourselves today, be with us in this moment of prayer. Open our minds to accept the truth that you are our creator and that as we use our individual gifts, we build up the body of your Christ. Help us to be attentive today to those around us, those who need a smile or perhaps a hug, a kind word. And let us not be distracted by the fact that we are only one person, that we don't have perfection in all of our deeds and all of our talents, but instead, let us simply humbly offer what we do have and trust that we are doing what we can according to your divine plan. We ask this in the name of our brother Jesus, the Christ, the one who is, who was, and who is to be. Amen. Have a great day.